Lesson 37. Hello again, and a belated Happy New Year. I recently received an email from Gary suggesting that I do a lesson on shooting fireworks. I thought this was a really great idea, so that'll be the focus of this episode. Shooting fireworks is quite similar to shooting scenes at night with a few differences. You may recall in episode 2, lesson 5 on night photography, that I suggested you use a good sturdy tripod for shooting night scenes. Well, the same holds true for shooting fireworks. It is imperative that your camera be rock steady while shooting low light scenes with long exposures. Otherwise, you'll have blur resulting from camera shake. Another thing to remember is to make sure that your camera is not set to auto ISO when shooting fireworks. If you use this setting, your camera will automatically select the highest ISO available since the built-in meter will read the night sky and try to compensate for the fact that there is little or no light available for exposure. ISO 200 is a good place to start for shooting fireworks. This slower film speed will produce excellent image quality and not produce the noise that is characteristic of higher ISO numbers. By the way, Santa was very good to me this Christmas and left me a brand new Nikon D3100 SLR under the tree, which I not only love using, but makes viewing camera settings a lot easier on the eyes. Depending on your camera model, you'll usually adjust ISO and or ISO auto sensitivity by way of the menu. First find your auto ISO setting mode and turn it off as seen here. Now go ahead and set your ISO to 200. Once you've done this, you're ready to go. Since using any sort of auto exposure setting is out of the question for shooting fireworks, you'll want to shoot in the manual mode with your aperture set at around 5.6 and your shutter speed at the B or bulb mode. This will allow you to keep the shutter open for the entire duration of each fireworks explosion and then close it after you record the scene. If you're shooting digitally, try this setting and view the result. If the image isn't dark enough, either open up your aperture by a stop, that is lower the f-stop number, or set your ISO to 400 and try again. If it's too bright, stop down the aperture by a stop, that is a higher f-stop number, or lower your ISO to 100. I can almost guarantee you that one of these settings will work, but if not, continue setting your exposure until you get the results you're looking for. Another consideration when shooting fireworks is what lens to use. If you're going to be really close to the action, your standard 18-55 to or 70mm lens will probably be fine. However, if you'll be shooting at a great distance, you'll be better off with a longer zoom lens up to 200 or 300mm. Obviously, the best thing to do is bring along all the lenses you have so you'll be ready for just about anything. Perhaps the greatest challenge for shooting fireworks is finding a good vantage point, especially if you'll be shooting at or near the actual event. You'll want to avoid setting up somewhere that blocks the view of other spectators, but at the same time, find a place where you'll be able to capture all the action. My advice is to arrive in enough time to get a handle on where the fireworks will be shot off from and case out a good position accordingly. If possible, look for a place that's wide open, away from the crowds. With regard to composition, I always shoot at a wide angle at first in order to get an idea of what all will be in the frame for my vantage point. If you discover that the fireworks could fill up a lot more of the frame, zoom in accordingly. Try shooting in a vertical format if you're getting too much dead space, as I did in most of these examples. No doubt you'll discover that some firework displays fill up the sky more than others which is why you'll probably lean towards zooming out to wider angles to avoid missing something and then crop as needed later, although this isn't always the best way to go. The key is to keep your composition as tight as possible without missing anything important. You'll get a good feel for composing your shots in pretty short order. While shooting firework displays, always remember to depress the shutter release button smoothly and gently, being careful not to jolt the camera any. If you have a remote shutter release device, by all means use it. Avoid panning the camera during an exposure, since all this will do is blur the entire scene. Let the firework trails provide all the movement, not your camera. Another tip is to simply keep your lens at a wide angle and view the fireworks live instead of through the viewfinder. Keep your finger on the shutter release button or remote control and press it at the appropriate time. This will save your eyes and allow you to enjoy the full effect of watching the fireworks while capturing stunning images at the same time. Another thing you may want to try is capturing a composite image of several firework explosions on the same frame. Compose your shot, 
keep the shutter open for the first explosion in the air, and then keep it open for the next one or two explosions as well. This doesn't always work out great, but it's certainly worth a try. Well, that's about it for now. I hope you've learned something new in this lesson. In case you didn't already know this, the Photography 101 app contains extra lessons as well as all kinds of bonus material. If you haven't gotten it yet for your iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, or Android smartphone, go to scottwittenberg.com, click on the link, and get connected. Thanks for your support. Until next time, goodbye. Mm -hmm.